All right, y'all, welcome back to another episode of Retro Rewire. My name is JJ, and we're gonna continue my 2020 pickups. In part one, we took a look at my Sega, Xbox, and Neo Geo pickups. I'll leave in the link, a link in the description down below so you can check that out. This episode is all about PlayStation, and like that previous episode, I'm gonna go ahead and focus on the hardware first, some controllers, and then we'll move on to the video games. So let's go ahead and get things underway. All right, so it's time for some PlayStation 2 action, and I'm just gonna be grabbing these from the pile. And, but yeah, uh, we have uh, Title Memories. I got volume one and two here, and definitely a freaking awesome compilation. Now, this one here, uh, let me see. Yeah, this one here was freaking expensive, and I had, a, I had to save up for a while to get this. This was about 90 bucks, and the main reason I got it is just because of, uh, as you can see here, the Rastan Episode Saga 3. Freaking love that game, but it has a few other classic games that are definitely worth uh, playing, but definitely an expensive little, uh, little compilation. Now this one here, um, it has 264, but it definitely wasn't that price. It was about, uh, I think this one was about 30 bucks, so a little bit less. And um, the main reason that I got this one is, um, which game was it? Gosh, I can't even, ah. Gun Frontier, duh. Uh, Gun Frontier was the main reason to get this. It's definitely a lot better port than the Saturn, and it has all the arcade effects intact, and definitely one that, um, it was worth buying just for that game alone, but definitely a cool uh, little compilation of games there. We have Metal Slug 3, uh, definitely a cool game on the PlayStation. Now this was $5.50. Definitely a classic that I recommend. Now this one is available on all uh, modern platforms. So mainly got it just to play on the CRT. And then we have Akumajo Dracula. This is the arcade version. Now this one is far from perfect. I uh, paid about 30 bucks from this, uh, for this game. And this is one of Hamster's first, uh, I guess um, emulated games for a modern console, but it definitely has issues. Now this one is available on PlayStation 4, Switch, Xbox One, and Steam. Uh, I think it's a part of like the Konami's Arcade Hits compilation, and I definitely recommend that version. But definitely an interesting game, especially if you're into, um, you know, all things Castlevania. And then we have freaking awesome series. We have Silent Hill 3, paid 10 bucks for this. Now this one fully supports English language and text. Definitely a cool one. Um, I don't, there's not really much that I can say about this, but definitely cheap. At 10 bucks, you can't go wrong for the Japanese version. And what's even better than that, in my opinion, is Silent Hill 2, the greatest hits. And this one I paid $5.40. Uh, Full uh, English uh, support, uh, definitely an awesome game. This is one of my all-time favorite survival horror games, and this is a masterpiece. Uh, there's nothing really that I can say about it, but at that price, that's pretty much a steal. And then we have Resident Evil Outbreak, Biohazard Outbreak, paid a dollar for this one. Um, I played this one online back in the day, and really it was just kind of a novelty thing is the reason why I picked it up. And at a dollar, you can't really go wrong. Now this is Onimusha. Now this one is actually super cheap. Um, I think I paid 50 cents for this game and at any hard off that you go to, you usually, you usually can see one or two copies there in, in, the, in the junk bin. But this one supports full English. Definitely a cool game, um, especially if you're into uh, samurais and you know fighting the undead. Here's another classic. We have Devil May Cry. As you can see up here in the corner, paid 50 cents for this one. Uh, definitely a cool game. Now this one is also available on all major platforms, Switch, Xbox One, 360, PS3, PS4, uh, Steam, as a part of the Devil May Cry HD collection. But 50 cents, you can't go wrong playing it um, in the original, uh, original flavor. And then we have uh, Zone of the Enders, Anubis paid about a dollar for this. Uh, I got it from the junk section. Now this one is uh, does not support uh, English language, but the gameplay is definitely intact and definitely a cool one. And I actually haven't beaten it yet, but this one is another one that's available on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 and PlayStation 4 and possibly a uh, PC. And then we have the document of Metal Gear Solid. Now this is kind of like a documentary behind the making of the game. Paid two bucks for this and uh, 
I haven't actually watched it yet, but definitely one that I will be watching uh, very soon as, you know, Metal Gear Solid 2 is a freaking awesome game. And then we have Lupin the Third. Now, this is a pretty cool game. I actually have the American version, but I ended up seeing this for like a dollar and I was like, why not? Uh, and it looks to be like a stealth action game. It's been years since I've played it, but I'll definitely give it another playthrough as I'm a big fan of Lupin the Third. And then we have freaking awesome game, Tekken Tag Tournament. And I can't see the price. Oh, 50 cents. Pay 50 cents for this game. I can't believe it. But uh, visually, this game still holds up today. And it's one that I recommend, especially if you're into like Tekken. But it looks freaking awesome and definitely a superior port to the arcade original. And then we have Capcom Fighting Jam or Fighting Evolution, paid $3 for this bad boy. Uh, definitely one of the less popular 2D Capcom fighting games, but it's kind of like a mishmash of uh, Capcom fighters, kind of like a Neo Geo Battle Coliseum, although uh, this one's probably not as cool, but definitely an interesting game. And at three bucks, come on. And then we have Capcom vs SNK, paid four bucks for this one. Uh, definitely a classic fighter and probably one of the better uh, in the versus line of uh, fighting games. And then we have the King of Fighters 2000, uh, definitely a cool game. Um, paid seven bucks for this one. King of Fighters, you know, gotta catch them all. And then we have Guilty Gear X Plus, paid a dollar for this one. And it pretty much is the, the Dreamcast game, although it in it adds a few more things into the mix, but definitely cool. And at a dollar, you can't really go wrong. Then we have Ridge Racer 5. I paid 50 cents for this bad boy, and I freaking love this game. Now, it's a little bit bare bones compared to the other ones, but I don't know, something about it. Um, this is one that I did complete 100%, uh, and it's actually not that hard to do that, but definitely a cool game with visuals that still, uh, that still look freaking awesome to this day, especially off of a CRT. And then we have the Dead or Alive 2. <laughs> like last, in the first episode I was talking about, you're gonna see a lot of Dead or Alive, and that's no exception in this episode. We have Dead or Alive 2, paid a dollar for this one. Definitely a cool port. Uh, I think the Dreamcast one is a little bit superior, but we have Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore. Now this one is freaking awesome, paid $3.30. And this is probably my favorite version of Dead or Alive 2, um, aside from the Xbox original remake. But definitely a cool one that adds a lot of interesting, uh, a lot of interesting backgrounds and, you know, costumes. But here's one, oh man, I freaking love this game. This is Virtual Fighter, the 10th anniversary. This is probably my favorite version of Virtual Fighter. It's $7.70 what I paid for, but freaking awesome game, and I can't recommend this one enough. I definitely like these old uh, texture, um, before any real textures were applied to these 3D fighters, but definitely an awesome game. And then we have Virtual Fighter 4, paid 50 cents for this one. Uh, definitely a cool one. Um, and then we have Virtual Fighter 4 Evolution, paid $4 for this one. Now this one you could usually find for a dollar if you look really hard, but definitely a cool one. And uh, Virtual Fighter 4 is a freaking awesome series. And then we have Shinomi, Shinobi, <laughs> paid a dollar for this one and uh, definitely a cool action game. And this is one that supports, uh, if I remember correctly, last time I played it, it was uh, fully in English, but definitely a cool one. Most of these games do support the, the English language. And then we have Res, $3.30. This is also available on the Dreamcast and the PlayStation 4. Definitely an awesome game. Um, I have this on the PlayStation 4. I have a digital copy and, you know, for $3.30, why not have this so I could enjoy it on the old CRT. And then we have Eco here, paid $3 for this one. This is a freaking cool game. This is also available on uh, the PlayStation 3. There's an HD remaster that actually supports uh, stereoscopic 3D. But the original, you can't go wrong, freaking awesome game. And at three bucks, you know, whatever. And then we have Shadow of the Colossus, another one that's available and also supports uh, stereoscopic 3D on PS3. But uh, $3 for this one and definitely cool. Now, I haven't played the remake on PlayStation 4. I'll eventually get around to doing that. But sometimes it's nice to enjoy the original flavor of the game. And then last but not least for PlayStation 2, we have Sword of the Berserk. This is a freaking awesome game. Definitely better than the Dreamcast original. And um, I'm definitely, I'm currently playing through this one and um, I'm looking forward to, you know, completing it. But 
it, it is a little bit repetitive. So if you if you don't like repetitive, you know, repetitive hack and slash games, then it's probably not for you. But I just kind of like the lore and the art direction of this game, and that's the reason why I'm kind of uh, playing through it. But definitely a cool find, and I got this from Amazon Amazon Japan, and I paid about eight bucks for it. But definitely cool. All right, guys. So it's time to dive into some PlayStation 3, and then the first game that I have here is Blaze Blue Continuum Shift. Um, definitely an interesting fighter. Um, now the Blaze Blue series, I'm not very familiar with, but I've heard a lot of good things about it, and I'm looking forward to giving this a playthrough. And then we have King of Fighters 12. Now this is kind of like a glorified demo in that it has like a, a smaller roster for King of Fighters as well as uh, featuring no end boss. But definitely a cool one nonetheless, just because of, um, at the time most games were shifting uh, to 3D, whether they were you know 3D fighters or 2D fighters, the models were becoming 3D. But here's one that kind of is uh, more fleshed out. We have the King of Fighters 13, paid about $18 for this one. And this one is uh, definitely higher roster count. Um, awesome backgrounds but this is definitely the one to get and it's also available on the PlayStation Network as well as the Xbox 360 and I believe a uh, Steam and then we have Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3 this is another one that um, this third uh, entry I haven't played too much of but definitely excited to give it um, a proper playthrough especially with characters like Ghost Rider definitely looking forward to checking characters like that out but Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 looks to be good. And then we have Virtual Fighter 5. This is a freaking awesome game. I also have a, um, what is it, Final Showdown, I believe it's the digital release. And there are a few differences between them, mainly in the music and the backgrounds. So if you're like a hardcore fan, you know, definitely worth owning uh, both. And this one was uh, $7.48. This one is also available on the Xbox 360, but Definitely a cool fighter. And then here we go, man. Uh, more Dead or Alive 5, or <laughs> Dead or Alive. This is uh, part five. Paid $2.64 for this one. And this is definitely a cool uh, entry into the Dead or Alive series. And I also have Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate. Paid 10 bucks for this one. This one adds a few more characters, as you can see um, up here. But definitely a cool series. And some of the, some of the backgrounds, um, you know, our stages are pretty cool because they're, they have a certain interactive elements. And then we have oh, one of my favorite Soul Calibur games. We have Part 4. This is a freaking awesome entry. Um, I actually haven't played Part 5 and I eventually will get it, but definitely having a good time playing through uh, Part 4. And that's pretty much it for fighting games. Uh, here we have one, uh, Dungeons and Dragons paid. Um, $40 for this one and this one is available digitally on the Wii U, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and I believe uh, Steam. But the difference is that this, uh, this release was actually done in-house by Capcom and not some third-party uh, developer. And they claim that the emulation is a little bit more accurate to the arcade original. But the one that's available digitally off of PlayStation Network is, is completely fine as it supports full English. This one is all in Japanese. But then we have one of my favorite first person shooters on the on the PlayStation 3, which is Killzone 2. Freaking love this game. Um, the visuals still hold up. Paid seven bucks for this one, but definitely an awesome game. And then we have Lost Planet 2, paid a dollar for this thing. And this one still holds up today. It's freaking amazing, especially the scale of some of the monsters, that, uh, some of the acrid that you're hunting down. But definitely uh, highly recommended and you know, also available on a, com a PC computer, PC and 360. And then we have the vanilla version of Dragon's Dogma with its cool, uh, funky intro song. Uh, definitely a cool game and actually one that I'm currently replaying because I want to get the, the Platinum Trophy. And I'm also playing it on the Nintendo Switch because, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a freaking awesome game and it's one of my favorite, um, I guess, uh, open world fantasy type games, but freaking awesome. And then we have Eco and Shadow of the Colossus. Now these games are freaking awesome and they look wonderful on the PlayStation 3. And the cool thing about these ones is that they both support stereoscopic 3D. So I definitely want to track down the cheapest uh, stereoscopic 3D TV as possible so I could enjoy uh, that little uh, fad, which I was definitely into um, 
during its heyday. Got a couple racing games here. I have a Sega Rally Revo, which is freaking awesome. Freaking love this game. And it's, uh, it's pretty much arcade bliss. And you can't go wrong with this one. Now this one is also available on the 360 and possibly on uh, PC. But freaking love this game and I, I want to say that um, the European stages are probably my favorite as they're pretty pretty uh, jaw-dropping stages. And then we have Dirt 3. I freaking love rally, rally cross, rally racing, um, anything rally and you know pair it up with arcade goodness. It's freaking a, a winning formula in my book. And this one is a little bit, um, I want to say it's a little bit more, there's a little bit more depth to it than the Sega Rally Revo game. And I actually paid five bucks for this at a hard off and it's actually the, the US version. I wasn't expecting to find it way out in a, in a small town in uh, Saitama, but definitely a nice find. We have Devil May Cry 4. Now this is also available on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and uh, PC and all those versions are superior to the PlayStation 3. But you know, for a dollar you can't go wrong and it's still perfectly playable. playable. Um, this is one that I actually beat way back in the day and I wanted to give it another playthrough because one of the characters kind of reminds me a lot of Bayonetta. But anyhow, definitely a cool game and a, a worthy entry into the Devil May Cry series. And then we have El Shaddai. Now this one unfortunately doesn't support any uh, English uh, voice or text. It's fully in Japanese, but you know, the gameplay is pretty simple and you can uh, pro progress through the game rather easily. Um, I do have uh, the American copy, but the reason why I got this one is because it included some limited edition uh, postcards. And since I collect, since I also collect po postcards, I, it kind of, you know, suckered me into getting it. And it was only two bucks. And the interesting thing about this game is it actually got like this limited edition release um, in Japan, which included, um, the jeans that uh, the main character Enoch is wearing. So kind of, kind of like an interesting uh, limit, limited edition, but definitely a cool game. And then we have Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2. Now I only played the initial opening sequence and it kind of blew me away. And I know that the game kind of changes gears and it goes to like a modern setting, but still I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and give it a playthrough. Um, I did platinum the original Lords of Shadow. so. Definitely looking forward to uh, to seeing this one through. And it also has some DLC, which I might uh, dive into. Here's another game that I have a platinum trophy for, which is Shadows of the Damned. Um, I have the American version, but I wanted to get the Japanese version as I don't have my US copy here with me. And it was only like, it, it was like under five bucks and freaking, freaking awesome game. You know, it's a uh, very campy, um, you know, Shinji Mikami's uh, Suda 51 paired up. And I believe the director is uh, some Italian dude. But anyhow, freaking awesome game. Uh, definitely give it a playthrough. And then we have Azra's Wrath. Paid five bucks for this one. Definitely a cool little um, game that's kind of serializes like the levels, you know, kind of like a episode, episodic. Um, but a pretty, pretty cool game. I mean, look at this freaking disc art. Freaking awesome. Now I did beat this one way back when it released uh, um, back in the States. Uh, I think I pre-ordered it. I pre-ordered a lot of these games that I'm showing you here, but here's more of the kind of like the disc art. But definitely a cool game, also available on the 360 and uh, I believe the PC, I could be wrong. Here's another one by Shinji Mikami, the guy behind Resident Evil. We have Vanquish. This is a freaking awesome game and one that I have played uh, way back in the day. This is also available on the modern, uh, more modern consoles like the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And those run at a higher frame rate, also available on the PC. But, you know, I'm good with the PlayStation 3 version, especially considering I paid a dollar for this, but definitely a cool one. But we have Biohazard Operation Raccoon City. I know this one, uh, got a lot of flack when it first released and it's one that I actually pre-ordered way back when it first launched but I only played the first initial section and then I just kind of left it um, to the uh, purgatory that is the backlog and you know for a dollar I decided to give it a um, another chance and I'm gonna play it again um, I did uh, the first initial uh, sequence and it's actually pretty entertaining for what it is um, I don't know, I, I, you know I'll, I'll definitely give it a playthrough because I am having fun just kind of going through it, but 
interesting little game there. Supports uh, full English, the Japanese version. And then we have um, Biohazard 5 alternate, uh, Alternative Edition, which is the Gold Edition back in the States. And this was actually a part of a bundle that included the PlayStation uh, camera and the Move controller. Now, I was in the market to get a Move controller because I have a few uh, light gun games for my PlayStation 3. And then uh, the bundle was about 40 bucks and the controller alone was about 35 bucks. And you know, after I added in the camera, might as well get the bundle. But when this game first launched, um, I wasn't, I was, I was pretty um, entertained with it, but you know, I was a little bit disappointed that it was a, a Resident Evil game. But some of the DLC like uh, Lost in Nightmares is actually pretty cool. And in retrospect, you know, it is an entertaining game, but you know, this is another game that's available for everything under the sun. So definitely multiple ways to play it. And then we have, um, we have the Silent Hill HD collection. This is another polarizing game. And definitely, if you haven't played the Silent Hill uh, series, I definitely recommend playing it on PlayStation 2 or, you know, Xbox, uh, the original Xbox. But if, if this is your only option, then by all means, give it a go. Cause uh, definitely a series worth playing through. Um, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of controversies, uh, surrounding this game, but you know, definitely cool. I actually got this, uh, this U S copy from Amazon Japan and I paid 30 bucks, which is my second time, uh, paying for this game. I pre-ordered it way back in the day, but I ended up trading it, but I decided you know, I, I do want it in my collection, but it is what it is. You know how it is. And then we have. The final game that I'm going to be showing is Deadly Premonition, the director's cut. This is a freaking awesome game. Um, I also have this on the Nintendo Switch, which is slightly a little bit better in terms of performance. But, you know, whether you're playing it on the, the Xbox 360, PS3, Switch, you're going to run into problems as well as the PC. Even the PC has issues. And um, this was originally known as Red Seeds Profile, and it was a it was an early PlayStation 3 game. And back in the States, uh, initially, it only got an Xbox 360 release, but then eventually, you know, this release was uh, made available for um, U.S. Uh, PlayStation 3 owners. And the cool thing about this one is it supports uh, stereoscopic 3D, which I would like to try out, and it also supports the Move controller, and it has like um, extended storylines. It, it it touts that it has um, enhanced graphics, but I don't know. I was playing it and I didn't see any evidence of it, but I guess like some of the water effects, some of the trees, uh, have a little bit, uh, better, um, texture work and shading. But apart from that, um, definitely an awesome game. This is one you play for the story and not necessarily to be wowed by its, uh, graphics, but freaking awesome game. And Anyhow, that's pretty much it for today's episode. This was my 2020 pickups and this was focusing on the PlayStation goods. In the follow-up episode, I will be focusing on Nintendo and I hope to get that one out, you know, sometime within the next three weeks because I have a few things uh, in store. Um, some major changes are coming, which I, I will reveal very, very soon. But anyhow, my name is JJ. Thank you for checking out Retro Rewire. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you all very, very soon. Ciao.